Hey everybody, thank God it's Friday. Yes, thank goodness it's Friday. And welcome to the kitchen. I'm the penguin. And I think I'm the chef. He thinks he's a chef. I'm he's tired. He's tired. He's been piddling all day. And he better get some sleep because come morning, well, actually, you know, here in just a few short hours, we're going to be leaving because, you know why? Because this is the start of the Cory Apple Festival weekend. Yeah, yard sales. Yard sales, yard sales, yard sales. All the way down Highway 46. Yes, tomorrow and Saturday. So, of course, we're going to take you guys along with us. We have a couple of things that we're looking for, so we'll see if we find them. And then, of course, you know, you always find the things that you aren't even looking for. That you didn't even know you wanted in the first place. But we're going to look anyway. So, the other day, um, when I made that, um, my great granny's oatmeal apple cake, I used a little bit of the evaporated milk, and I said, well, that's okay, because I'll just use the rest later on. Because I came from a family of eight, and my dad was the only one working, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, so sometimes things got tight. So, if my mom wanted to make gravy, and she didn't have a lot of milk on hand, because I had a lot of brothers, so they were hogging all the milk all the time. Um, anyway, so she didn't have a lot of milk on time. She would go to the pantry. Hence, the reason why this would be a great thing for preppers. Keep some of this extra in your pantry. Yeah, we have some of those in our um, prepper pantry. Yeah, we do have some more cans. Lots of cans, actually, in our prepper pantry. But, and I have a lot of the hot, that powdered milk. Yeah, this is something that's very easy to make. And honestly, if you try it, you'll be fooled. You won't even realize then it wasn't made with a lot of milk or heavy whipping cream or anything. So we're going to be making evaporated milk sausage gravy. So we're going to be using evaporated milk and water, which is what my mom did a lot of times when we were low on milk when I was growing up. So um, you can you, you can even make it without any meat if you don't have any meat on hand. Egg gravy is good. Yeah, egg gravy is good. You can just use it over biscuits or over bread or even with crackers, whatever you have. That I'm going to be using sausage because I need some sausage gravy for a video that I'm going to be doing um, either tomorrow or the next day. So I, I really needed this. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and bring you guys along and we'll make my evaporated milk gravy. I don't normally do this, but I had the evaporated milk that I needed to use. So we're killing two birds with one stone. So this is, I like to use sage sausage. Sage is my sausage of preference. But you can use any kind that you want. Um, I like Tennessee Pride, Bob Evans, Jimmy Dean. Those are my favorite. So I'm going to get this into my skillet first after I get it opened. I've got my electric skillet sitting over here. And we're going to get this sausage frying up. That's the first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and use the whole pound um, roll of this. Because I want to have a lot of sausage for what I'm going to be um, doing with this in a day or so. So I'm going to get this into my skillet. So has everybody's fall started out very well yet? Second day into fall? Well, technically the third day into fall because after it's after midnight. So, well, by the time you guys see this, it will be after midnight. Because our videos always go up late. So, because we're late, bloomers. Our videos always go up late. But anyway, hope it's been, fall has started off well for you all. And <clears throat> me and Chef have been sitting down and planning some of the things that we want to do for Vlogtober. And so hopefully it'll be a good one this year. We had fun last year, even though we were late getting into it. Because like I said earlier, we didn't post our first video until October 4th. So we'll be coming up on our anniversary. And here in a couple of days, we'll be posting information about our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So stay tuned for that also. But I'm gonna turn my electric skillet up here and start getting this cooking a little bit. I'm not using my meat chopper because I don't want it to be super de duper fine. I, I want a little bit of chunks of sausage in there. So I'm just going to chop it up myself with my old wooden spoon. 
anything anyway if i can talk durr. i have a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk sitting over here and it's shy just about um i think i used a quarter of a cup out of it <clears throat> but that's okay um i've got some flour some salt and pepper um some butter in case i need just a little bit of extra fat or you can use oil or lard bacon grease anything that you have if your sausage doesn't have enough fat in it and then i have three bottles of bottled water use tap water bottled water and this actually works out well for us because we're on a boil order right now um even though we live in the country we still have a city water hookup which we prefer well water over city water I wouldn't get in trouble. I'd use that of the old well. Yeah, there. we do have an old well here, but... And it's got good water in it. Yeah. Um, but we're hooked up to the city. So, um, anyway, they've done some cleaning and some maintenance. So, right now, we're on a boil order. Which kind of works out perfect for this video anyway. So, we're just going to be using bottled water. So, I'm just going to sit and let this get browned up some. Um, thank you all for the comments about Pootie. Like I said, I think he's just tired. Bless his little heart. He's only, like, he ever, he fluctuates between 12 and 13 pounds. And he tries so hard to keep up with the big dogs. He thinks he rules the roost. And he just, sometimes he just runs, 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 runs. And I just think he was a little extra tired, plus a little bit of the change in the climate. Um, because it's been warm and we haven't been putting clothes on him but because it's turned chilly now we went ahead and we went ahead and got out his light shirts and put him on him and he seems to be a lot happier having his little light shirts on <laughs> and he's looking at me right now if I could turn the camera around but he has a crooked lip <laughs> he's got that look on his face like what are you talking about mom but yeah he's He's been fine. He's a little pistol. He just plays and runs really, really hard. He does. Anyway, we're just going to get this browned up. But, yeah, we're definitely going to take you guys along with us in the morning when we go on our outing for yard sales and stuff. Oh, yeah, I know somebody asked that little short we made with the moon and stuff. That is really the moon. I, I videotaped that outside that night. Yes, that short that we did was, yes, that was actually our moon. And the clouds were moving very fast. It was not anything that was sped up. Um, we had storms rolling in and the clouds were moving really fast. It was just the perfect opportunity to make that fun little short. So, we, we Chef just originally had wanted to film the full harvest moon. But once he filmed it and I saw it, I'm like, oh, you know, me penguin, I've got to add some spookies to it. And then he's like, we've got to find some good music. So um, we found that. It sounded like, what is it, Halloween? Yeah, it's almost like the music yeah. Halloween. Yeah, the Michael Myers Halloween theme. Yeah. So. Yeah, for those of you that didn't know it, Michael Myers mask was actually a Captain Kirk. William Shatner mask turned inside out that they bleached and messed the hair up on it and stuff. Yeah, if you guys didn't hear him, the original Michael Myers mask was a William Shatner mask from Star Trek that they had messed up on, so they turned it inside out and they bleached, bleached, it, bleached it. Added some hair. Or no, they cut, they cut the hair up on the stuff. Oh, uh, they cut the hair up on it, so. Yeah. So it was still William Shatner, this they made it look a little bit better. That's how the mask was developed for... Way back in 1978. Yeah, Michael Myers in 1978. So, anyway, our sausage is browning up really fast, which is good. I'm not going to season it yet. Now, a lot of times when I see people make their gravy, they'll pull the sausage out of the pan. I don't do that because I feel like you don't need to do that. That's not... It's not necessary to do that. You're still going to get... The same good results. I guess some people do it so they can see exactly how much fat they have in the bottom of their skillet, but I can, I mean, I can see here just fine, and I know I'm going to need to add some, but just not very much. 
let this finish cooking. I like to make sure that I like to make sure that my sausage is cooked all the way through before I add anything else to it. Anyway, what else do we have to tell them, Chef? I can't even remember. I'm going to be starting on trying to make a Halloween wreath. I debated whether to videotape it or not. I may videotape making it and just put it on fast speed. Um, it's been so long since I've made anything like that. I'm sure it's going to take me a while. I don't want to make it a two or three hour long video. I haven't quite decided yet. But I'm anxious to make it. I see everybody making all of these Halloween things now. and Halloween is just so much fun. Chef's favorite holiday next to Christmas. Well, and his birthday. <laughs> Which his birthday will be coming up here shortly. So, in about three weeks, he'll be having a birthday. So, I'm not sure what we're going to do for his birthday yet, but. We'll think of something. We will think of something. Okay, so I've got some butter here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a couple of tablespoons of butter. Actually, it's already cut for me. I'm just gonna drop that in. I don't need a lot of fat for the gravy. So I'm just gonna get this melted in here. Again, you can use oil, lard, butter, whatever you prefer. But the oil that's clinging to the meat also is going to act as part of my roux. So I'm not worried about it. Not at all. Let me get a spoon and I'll be right back. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and get some flour. And normally you want to do equal amounts of fat and flour, so equal amounts of oil and flour or whatever, but I've made it so many times that I'm just not really worried about that, so I'm just going to take some flour and sprinkle it over here, about three heaping tablespoons full, and I'll check it out then and see if I need to add some more of it. Get this all stirred up here. I think I'm going to add just one more. One more. Two, three tablespoons. Sprinkle it all over my sausage. Now you want to let this cook for just a little bit because if you don't, you're going to have some floury, pasty tasting gravy and you don't want that. It's like I said, even though we're making this with evaporated milk and water, those that eat it will not know the difference unless you tell them. gonna let this sit and brown up for just a little bit make sure that all the flour is broke up give it just a minute or so so anyway I think we've had our flowers brown up some we've had enough time with this so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my evaporated milk get all of that in here and give it a stir a little bit and I'm going to open a bottle of water and I'm going to pour some inside the can because a lot of that goodness always stays inside the can so I'm going to pour that in here try to get some of that extra out of there Boop, boop, boop been saying that all day today for some reason and I don't know why poop poopy do okay I poured it water in here so I'm just gonna dump this in here let the rest of the evaporated milk come out all right and you don't need I mean you can feed a, you can easily feed six to eight people off of this um, if you want to make more, then you might want to add another can of evaporated milk. We're just going to go ahead and stir this up. 
in. I didn't know exactly how much water I may need, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of this. So that will make our can of evaporated milk and one 16.9 full an ounce bottle of water. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and we're gonna stir it. We're not, this is not what we're gonna have for dinner tonight, of course. Um, but I am making it because I needed to make it ahead for my my recipe coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in some pepper. It's up to you how much pepper you add or if you even want to add pepper to it. So I've probably got about a half to three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper in there. And I'm going to add some salt. Probably about a half a teaspoon of salt to this. Put that in there and yes just something that me and chef always adds to our gravy um you can you don't have to we like to add just a dash of chili powder you can't really you can't really tell it's in there as far as flavor that you just get a little you just know there's a little something special in there just doing a little splash of chili powder and a lot of times when Chef makes his gravy, he'll add some a splash of hot sauce as well. Yeah, I don't know. Way, way back ago, I made my gravy, my smokehouse gravy. Yeah, he did make some smokehouse gravy. We meet. If any of you guys have not seen that, I made um, I made homemade biscuits, um, sage biscuits, and he made his smokehouse three meat gravy, which I'll link that video to this one. That's definitely a more extensive gravy, um, but it's really, really good gravy. It's yeah. one of those gravies that you've got quite a bit of time to work on it. Yeah, that's then, like if you got company coming over for breakfast or Christmas or whatever, and you want to make something really nice. Yeah. One time I made this gravy for my friend when she came over from out of town to visit, and she said that this gravy that I'm making right here, she said it tasted better than Cracker Barrel gravy. So, which I've never really had Cracker Barrel gravy. I've heard quite a few people say that it's really good. Some people are intimidated by gravy because they can't get it to thicken up. Just a matter of patience and the right amount of flour to fat. Again, I think it helps to not pull the sausage out when you're making your roux. And this is already thickening up nicely. And it's like once it cooks and it starts to thicken up, you can determine if you want to add more liquid to it, if you want to add more water, or if it's fine just the way it is. We like our gravy thicker, but we don't like it pasty. We want it to stick to the biscuit, but we also want, <laughs> we don't want your, <laughs> we don't want your lips and tongues to stick together. Isn't that what you'd say? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep stirring this up. And like I said, it's already got a very nice, nice consistency going. And it's not taking any time at all. It's got a lot of sausage in here. It's going to have good flavor, a little bit of butter, some salt and pepper dash of chili powder and again people are not going to notice that it doesn't have milk in it or heavy whipping cream in it because the flavor is just good it's just good flavor of course you always need to pair it with a good biscuit so I also made a video doing my buttermilk biscuits and I'll link that video to this as well No, I don't think. Oh, um, maybe I don't know. I don't think I have. Chef has the best low-carb sausage gravy too that he makes. I'm not sure if he made a video with that or not, but if not, it's something that he can do in the future. But he said, you know, you're making gravy. He said, you know, I'm going to be taking a little bit of that gravy tonight I said I know but you can't have too much of it because I need it for my I need it for my next video so 
smells really, really good. You can always tell when it's getting good and thick because it leaves that nice little these leaves that nice little ring around your pan and your coating on your spoon. You can see that on the back. Swipe your finger through it. If it doesn't all bleed back together, then you know that you're getting a good consistency on the gravy. I'm going to get ready to taste it here in just a minute. And it's one of those things, if you find that your gravy, no matter what you're doing, is just not thickened up enough, you can always take just a little bit of cornstarch and a little bit of water and mix it up and pour it into your gravy and that'll help thicken it up. But if you do, if you follow what I just did, you shouldn't have to even worry about it. Um, and then, you know, of course, the longer gravy sits, the more thick it gets. So when you go to reheat it, you can either add some water to thin it back down, or you can add milk if you want to, or some more evaporated milk, whatever you need to do. But I think I've got the, just about the perfect consistency that I want right here. It's a nice, not too thick, not too thin. Gravy. It's always hard to tell on camera because sometimes things look like they're running off the spoon faster than they really are, but. Smells like an old mom and pop restaurant when you walk in in the morning time and they serve up biscuits and gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a little bit and I'm gonna grab my spoon here and I'm just gonna just gonna taste it a little bit here for just a second see if we need to add anything else to it see as you can see what I'm talking about thick right there if I turn the spoon it's not if you can see that it's not running off the spoon it's just there and I guarantee you folks if you try this it's super good if you don't want to use sausage, you can use bacon. Um, you can use bologna. My mom used to make bologna gravy. Yeah. Um, yeah, ham. Any meat that you choose to. Um, she used to do the same thing when she'd fry chicken. She, after the chicken was fried, she'd pull the chicken out, leave the chicken grease and the, the little giblets and all that in the pan and make gravy out of that too. And that was super good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think that right there is just perfect and I'm not going to add anything else to it. It doesn't need any salt. It doesn't need any pepper. And it is just perfect. So, I just wanted to show you guys. So, if you wake up one morning and you want to make gravy but you don't have any milk, go to your cupboard, go to your pantry. Everybody should have some cans of evaporated milk in their pantry. If you don't, then make sure you get you some. And you will have the best tasting gravy that's so simple. Evaporated milk and water. Again, even if you don't want to add meat to it, you don't have to add meat to it. You just put you some fat into the pan of some kind. Let it cook up. You'll want to season it. You know, get you some good seasonings. And um, get you some water in there, some flour and water. Just remember, make sure to let your flour cook so it doesn't have that pasty taste. So I'm going to see if I can get you guys a close-up of the gravy without the phone falling into the pan. See, like I said, it's not, it's not too thick, but it's not watery. This is just the perfect consistency that you want over your biscuits enough that that biscuit can absorb some but yet not too thick so all right guys i just wanted to show you that since i had to have some and you'll be seeing what i'm going to be using this for in the next day or two but for now i'm going to go ahead and end this video me and chef's got some stuff to do before we take off for yard sales in a few hours and like i said we'll be bringing you guys along so anything you want to say chef Hi guys.
Chef says night, guys. Okay, guys, we will see you in a video tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody.